Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, last time we have discussed the absolute configuration of chiral molecules and we have introduced to you the first system that was introduced earlier and that was called the D and L capital D and capital L system. This is a system to notify the absolute configuration. I again remind you what is absolute configuration? It is the absolute arrangement of the groups in the three dimensional space. Okay. So, D L was the starting point, it was based on the carbohydrates configuration of carbohydrates which uh, Professor Emil Fischer started. Okay. He assumed that plus glucose had the D configuration that means the lowest possible chiral center, the hydroxy group is at the OH uh, that right and the that was he assumed to be D plus glucose and it started uh, uh, on then onwards. Now, the problem with this configuration, you, I just repeat what is this configuration that if you have a chiral molecule and if you write it in the uh, Fischer projection formula that is the two dimensional formula and you should write it in a proper way. So, that the carbon there are two carbons suppose. So, one the top one should be at the highest oxidation level suppose it is between CO 2 H and CHO. So, the CO 2 H is a higher oxidation level than C H O. So, you put the CO 2 H at the top. Now, if you have a heteroatom on the right and a hydrogen on the left, we call this as the D isomer capital D and the opposite one where X is on the left and CO 2 H on the right C H O at the bottom then that will be called L. Remember this is very important the positioning of the of the carbon in the vertical axis that actually decides whether your x will be on the right or on the left. Now, the, this system uh, could not be applicable in case of where there is so many cases first if there is no heteroatom then what are you going to do if there is no x that means the heteroatom then this will fall apart if x is suppose methyl then this will be replaced by a methyl that cannot be regarded as a heteroatom. So, uh, sorry not this one this x should be replaced by methyl, but it is still chiral, but you cannot have a D L nomenclature system for this. Okay. So, it fails when x is an alkyl group x is a different I gave an example the most important thing is x is not containing a heteroatom and the other is that if there is no hydrogen if hydrogen is missing and if you have if you have that is replaced by two heteroatoms two heteroatoms hydrogen is replaced by a heteroatom and x is already there. So, then there is a situation that you have two heteroatoms may be different y and y here. So, both x and y are heteroatoms then also the problem is which one is now the which one I should get a preference so that I can consider right or left. So, in these cases it fails that means it is not a general absolute configuration. So, there must be something some better way of looking at these molecules and name them accordingly. Okay. So, the next one was developed by the but developed and was accepted by the international union of pure and applied chemists you know the IUPAC is the our organization which uh, provides all the rules how to name a compound and then how to name a stereochemical compound. So, they accepted uh, they proposed whatever was the proposal by three scientists in three scientists very famous scientists one is Kahn another is Tingold and the third one is Prelog and sometimes this is called Kahn in the CIP system. CIP system is nothing but Kahn in gold prelog system. So, whatever they proposed IUPAC has accepted and it is a very general way 
of giving absolute configuration to a molecule. Now, what you do in the in this CIP system? Suppose you have the carbon. Now, I am writing it in the tetrahedral fashion. You know that in the tetrahedral fashion, two bonds, all four bonds, cannot be in the same plane. So, if one bond is up, then one bond has to be down, and the, these two bonds can be in plane. So, three bonds cannot be in a plane in a tetrahedron. Uh, there are there can be three bonds which are up, there can be three bonds which are down, one bond uh, can be in the plane, but remember three bonds can never be in a plane in a tetrahedron. Okay. Now, this is a carbon which is a tetrahedron and suppose this has got four ligands A, B, C, I just in order to avoid carbon I put D and E. So, if this is the scenario A, B, E, D, then what this IUPAC system, this RS system tells is that you assign a what is called a priority sequence of the of the groups of the ligands priority sequence okay and uh, there, so there must be a way to give priority to these atoms and um, so the rules actually are two basically first of all after giving the priority sequence how you should look at this molecule and and then you see that uh, what are the sequence of priority when you go from 1 to 2 to 3. Okay. Let me clarify it a little better. Suppose by priority sequence rule, I will come to the priority sequence rule later. Suppose that this becomes number 1 carbon and this becomes number 2 carbon, this becomes number 3 carbon and this becomes number 4 carbon. Okay. So, this is 1 that is 2 that is 3 and that is 4. So, now the rule says that you should view this molecule in such a way that the number 4 carbon is away from you, away from the observer. So, here the number 4th carbon is actually behind this plane of the board. So, it is not difficult the face that we are uh, having here. So, we are actually in the front of the board and this group which is the B group which is having the 4th priority. So, uh, the least priority that is at the back. So, whatever I see from here that is correct that is according to the rule. The rule says you look at the carbon away from the fourth group. So, I am looking at the carbon away from the fourth group and then you see what is the sequence order if you go from 1 to 2 to 3 what is the direction order? What is the direction that if you go starting from 1 to 2 to 3 what is this order? Is it clockwise or this is anti clockwise? So, in this case you can see that E 1, 2 and 3 are arranged in a in an anti clockwise direction. Okay. So, in, in other systems like if I draw the mirror image of this suppose I draw the mirror image of the same molecule now. So, A will be now here, D will be now here, A will be here, B will be there still alpha this is a lateral image I am taking and then D is here and E is there. Okay. So, these are the two systems that I get. Now, the priority sequence remain the same. So, 1 is here, then E was 2, 3 is D and this is 4, this is 4. Now, if you look at this molecule at this system at the carbon stereogenic carbon, again the it is a you are uh, following the CIP norms that is you are observing the carbon away from the fourth group because the fourth group now is behind the plane of the board. So, now you see what is the direction between uh, if you go from 1 to 2 to 3 and back to 1. So, now you see this is clockwise, this is clockwise. So, this is what is called now if this 1 to 2 to 3 direction is clockwise when you view a molecule away from the fourth group then that will be called R molecule if it is clockwise that actually has come from the Greek word rectus means right and anti when this 1 to 2 to 3 direction is anti when you observe the molecule when observe the carbon specifically away from the fourth ligand the ligand of the least priority and if the direction is anti clockwise then that will be called the S compound and that is called sinister sinister is means left in in Latin. Okay. These are Latin words rectus and uh, sinister. 
Okay. So, you know the at least you know what to do in a uh, if you have a three dimensional molecule you have to assign priority sequence and then observe it from a direction. So, there are two things assignment of priority that is one important issue and the second issue is the the direction of view which direction you should from which direction you should uh, see the stereogenic carbon. Okay. So, we have to uh, now go to the sequence rules how do we know that whether A is 1 whether B is 2 or B is 4 how do we know. So, the what are the rules now the rules say that you you your priority sequence to assign priority sequence you first check use atomic number to distinguish atomic number to distinguish between the ligands. Okay. So, what does it mean that means, if a carbon has a fluorine and a chlorine then fluorine a chlorine has higher atomic number. So, chlorine will get better preference than fluorine. Okay. Now, the things may become more complicated later on I will tell you because the first atom that is attached to the stereogenic center may be the same, but the the second atom may be different that means, suppose this is CH 2 then CH CH 3 and CH 3 and you have CH 2 and then CH 3. So, if I, if you are asked to distinguish between these two then what you do you check the first carbon first ligand which is attached to this stereogenic center and you you see what are the other ligands that are attached. So, what are the other ligands one is carbon another are two hydrogen. So, this is the scenario of this carbon. Okay. Here is also one carbon attached hydrogen attached another hydrogen attached for this carbon. So, there is no difference. So, the now Kahn Ingold Prelog says that you continue proceeding towards the outer words towards the chain outer words away from the stereogenic center <coughs> and then away from the stereogenic center and then see where is the difference. Once you find a difference you stop there and uh, and then assign the priority. So, first carbon did not do any uh, showed no difference. What about the second carbon here this is a carbon which is attached to two carbons and one hydrogen and this is a carbon which is attached to three hydrogens. So, obviously, carbon being a higher atomic number atom. So, this one gets ultimately. So, this group wins over this one. So, this will be then uh, we are not we are discounting these groups suppose that means, this will get higher prof preference over this this will be greater than this. Okay. So, if it is one then that is true. Now, this type of work you have to continue in many cases. In many cases you have to continue this going away from the stereogenic center to find a difference. Okay. Once you find a difference then you stop and then assign the priority. Okay. So, what you use use the atomic number as the criteria to do the discrimination. once you are finished with the atomic number criteria and that still does not give any difference. So, it appears that the ligands may be same, na? but we are dealing with a chiral carbon that will happen in case of in isotopic systems consider atomic weight to distinguish between the isotopes. Okay. So, to distinguish between the isotopes, but the rule as now the important thing here is the number 1 rule has to be used first and then followed by the number 2 rule. Number 2 rule is atomic weight you use 
here you use atomic number. Now, I will give you an example to stress this point. What I am saying that suppose if a deuterium is attached and a hydrogen is attached and suppose a witch and a methyl, then assigning priority se sequence will be this will be if you go by atomic number first you have to go by atomic number. So, atomic number wise this is number 1 then this is number 2 and then you are stuck atomic number cannot distinguish between deuterium and hydrogen because both are same atomic number. So, now you have to use once this rule cannot distinguish between the groups then you distinguish this to use your second criteria that is the atomic weight criteria. So, based on the atomic weight criteria this becomes 3 and that becomes 4. Okay. Another case may happen that you have C D 2 then C H C H 3 C H 3 and you have C H 2 C H 2 O H. Okay. So, in this case okay, this is one that is no that is no longer 2 methyl because this gets higher priority over this uh, because that is only attached to hydrogen 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 no substitution. So, we we write this in case of this carbon there is deuterium deuterium and carbon for this carbon there is a carbon there is a carbon there is a hydrogen. Okay. For this carbon there is hydrogen hydrogen carbon for this carbon there is hydrogen hydrogen oxygen. Okay. Now, according to the atomic number rule this is number 1 then you apply the atomic number continue atomic number until it falls apart that it cannot distinguish. So, you see after this this group there is hydrogen hydrogen carbon there is deuterium deuterium carbon, but at this stage the rule 1 says that deuterium is equivalent to 1 uh, hydrogen because they have both atomic number. So, you have to use the atomic number rule first and based on that this becomes you cannot distinguish at this stage then you go to the next carbon and you see there is a difference hydrogen hydrogen oxygen has come atomic number more here it is all carbon. So, which one is is now number 2. So, this becomes number 2 and this becomes number 3 and methyl becomes number 4. So, you see in spite of having the deuterium here you could not give higher prefer preference to this uh, to this because your first atomic number rule can distinguish between the two. First atomic number rule does not care whether there is isotopes, isotopes are regarded as the same to so, the atomic number rule. Once that falls apart then only you can utilize the isotope rule that means the second distinguish between the uh, between the isotopes. Okay. The third rule this is the second rule the third rule says that in case of a double bond suppose you have a double bond attached to a stereogenic center okay, and you have an isopropyl group. So, how the isopropyl group is compared with the with a vinyl group this is called the vinyl group. So, what you do it has been suggested that because there is a double bond present between these two carbons. So, you think as if two carbons two extra carbons you one extra carbon is attached to this carbon and one extra carbon is attached to this carbon because they are connected by a double bond. So, you have to break it into so this is a stereogenic carbon you have to break it into CH CH 2 right single bond and then on both the carbons you attach an extra carbon. Why? Because this is attached to that by a double bond. So, it should have a double hand two carbon atoms and on the same argument this carbon is attached to this carbon by a double bond. So, now you have attached a single bond. So, you make a you add another extra carbon some these are called phantom atoms and in some books you will find just to distinguish between the normal carbons attached 0, but this has really no significance if they are behaving like the normal carbon they are behaving like the normal carbon only thing they do not have any substitution that is the difference. Okay, let us continue. So, these are normal carbon and then you have this isopropyl CH, CH, CH 3 and CH, CH 3. Now, let us see the first carbon you have 
look at the first carbon you have uh, this is attached to the carbon a hydrogen and a carbon carbon hydrogen and a carbon this carbon is attached to a hydrogen sorry a ch2 this was uh, ch2 sorry this was ch2 ch 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 now we, we better compare this one with actually we continue with this h h h h c the first one is h h c h h c ok the second one h h c so this wins over wins over that one because this is h h c and this is c c h ok so that has the uh, that has the higher uh, preference than this if you change it suppose i change it to isopropyl I, earlier it was isobutyl okay so if i make it to isopropyl then what will happen this carbon is attached to this carbon is attached to what hydrogen carbon carbon so there is no difference here hydrogen carbon carbon is the same way as hydrogen carbon carbon ok but the next carbon now you have to go to the next carbon the next carbon if you see this is carbon attached to a carbon then two hydrogens but what about this this one this one is attached to hydrogen 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 what about this one you have to check everywhere this one is attached also to hydrogen 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 so now you see there is a difference here because this carbon is attached to a carbon whereas this carbon or that carbon is not attached to a carbon it is attached to only hydrogens so which one wins over the uh, which one wins is here that that means this is this has got higher priority over this okay we can talk about the triple bonds also the same case that what is going on with the double bond the same case is with the triple bond. So, if you have C H versus you are comparing with tertiary butyl suppose C C H 3 C H 3 C H 3. So, what is done as I said now you have to see this view this as a carbon attached with a single carbon because there is a there are triple bonds. So, you break the both the bonds make it a single bond, but while doing so as you have broken two bonds. So, now this carbon will be will be regarded as having two ghost carbon atoms ok. You can write 0 as you wish and you can uh, have to do the same thing a ghost carbon atom at both the carbons ok. And here there is no ghost because it is just normally attached. So, this is your stereogenic center and this is your C CH3 CH3 CH3. So, now what will happen? Now you have this uh, you, you check what is that where is the difference the first is that this carbon is attached to three carbon atoms. So, there is virtually no difference this carbon is also attached to three carbon atoms, but the next carbon whichever you take is attached to only hydrogen 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 and here they are attached to carbon carbon hydrogen ok. So, ultimately acetylene wins over T butyl. So, we can write C H double bond C H 2 has higher preference than C H C H 3 C H 3 acetylene has higher preference over tertiary butyl ok. So, in many cases you have to do this this addition of of host atoms like in aldehyde there is the same thing that if you have an aldehyde versus so this is your stereogenic center versus C O H a carbon bearing two O H s uh, which are usually not there, but electron withdrawing groups can make a carbon uh, forced to have two O H s ok versus this. Now, here what you have to do 
we have to again do the same thing that there is a now this is a carbon double bond to oxygen so you have broken a bond so now you have to have two oxygens here one of them is the phantom atom for the oxygen it was attached to a carbon by a double bond so now we have to put a carbon here okay so carbon host now you compare these two so here this carbon is attached to hydrogen oxygen oxygen this carbon is attached also like that hydrogen oxygen oxygen so there is no difference but the next oxygen is attached to a carbon and this next oxygen is attached to a hydrogen so this wins over that so cho so the rule says cho greater than c h o h o h okay so like that i hope you will be able to uh, sort out several things so the rule as i said the rule is uh, based on first of all atomic number once the atomic number issue is gone if it fails to distinguish between two ligands then you apply the atomic weight to distinguish between isotopes and then for double bond systems triple bond systems you consider as if there is a single bond between between the two atoms but in addition these two atoms are attached to what are called ghost atoms so you have to duplicate it or triplicate it the system like in double bond the carbon double bond is thought to be attached to the normal carbon and you have to duplicate to add another carbon okay so that is the uh, that is what is the carnegie prelog rules okay the about the double bonds <coughs> sometimes what happens that there is a there are see there is a double bond here which is in the cis conformation and there is a double bond here which is in the trans conformation suppose this is in the cis if it is in the cis that means this hydrogen is of this side this hydrogen is on this side methyl is on this side that is cis and if it is trans that means this hydrogen is on this side this hydrogen is on that side sorry this hydrogen now you have to make trans so this hydrogen is here this methyl is there okay so in this case this is your trans later on i think you you or you have already known that this is what is called a z this is called a z isomer in absolute conformation similar to rs nomenclature and trans is called the e isomer okay so here the rule is cis precedes trans that means between these two groups this one will be will be having higher priority if it is one then this is true okay cis precedes trans or you can say z precedes e okay so same thing cis precedes trans z precedes on the same token if you have if you have groups which are chiral here a carbon which is chiral and which is having r configuration suppose and on this ligand you have the same group but in the s configuration okay if that be the case then also the atomic number atomic uh, weight nothing can distinguish between these groups only the absolute configurations are different so here the rule is that r precedes precedes means r is favored over s r precedes s okay so that is the this is the rule so if you face this type of situation then you can do that okay i can give you just to end up i can do one problem where this rs is involved so let us uh, do a problem on these uh, sub rules c species trans or z precedes e and then r precedes s okay so if we draw a molecule which has got a which is a five carbon molecule suppose this which is to the right see there's a trihydroxy compound then you have which and you have o h here okay h h h now there are three carbon atoms and three carbon atoms this is definitely stereogenic this is stereogenic and this 
we are not very sure whether it is stereogenic or not because that will be depending on the uh, the configuration of this and configuration of this. This will become stereogenic when the configuration of this is not the same as the configuration of this stereogenic center, then it becomes stereogenic. If they become same, suppose this is R that is R or that is S that is S, then this carbon is not stereogenic. So, this type of carbon is actually called pseudo chiral center or pseudo stereogenic centers. Okay. Sometimes stereogenic, sometimes not. So, let us see what is the status of this. Now, first you have to assign the R s configuration of this carbon. So, if this is 1 that is 2 that is 3 and that is 4. So, it will be 1, 2, 3 looks like anti clockwise, but since the hydrogen is in the horizontal side and that means it is towards you. So, actually you have to see behind the board and if you look at from behind the board. So, this should be in the clockwise direction. So, whatever you see here you just reverse it. So, actually this will be in the R configuration. Okay, because the hydrogen is towards you. So, whatever you see again I repeat you change it to the other direction. So, what about this one? This is number 1, that is number 2, this is number 3 and this is number 4. The same thing hydrogen is in the horizontal position. So, you have to be careful. So, this shows that this is looks like R configuration clockwise, but you have to see from the back side and from the back side it will look like just the opposite. So, it is in the S configuration. So, this is S and that is R. So, now this carbon has become a stereogenic center because it is now attached with four different four different groups. Okay. The difference here is basically different atoms and here the difference is because the different configuration of the chiral centers attached to it. Okay. Now, what is the configuration of this? Now, this is the carbon where uh, this group is R and that's, that group is S. So, if you now do the priority sequence, maybe I can just do it here because that figure looks complicated now uh, or cumbersome. So, this is R, the which is on the right, this is CO 2 H. So, if it is and this is in the S configuration, which is on the right and H is on the left, CO 2 H and this is O H, this is sorry, this is H and that is O H. So, now what is the configuration of this? This will be your number 1 that is the highest atomic number, then comes either this or that, but since R precedes S, so R gets preference over S. So, this will be 2 and that will be 3 and the hydrogen will be 4. So, 1, 2, 3 looks like R, but because the hydrogen is on the horizontal side, so the configuration is S. Okay. So, this is a R S S compound. Interestingly, if you change the change this weight into this side, so what will happen now? So, this will become also R because you have remembered in Fisher projection if you interchange the position of two groups then the configuration gets inverted. So, this becomes all also R. So, now this loses its stereogenicity, it is no longer stereogenic because this is attached to the same so, there is to the chiral center, same chiral center with same configuration. Okay. So, you have to be careful. So, this is what is as I said that it is sometimes chiral, sometimes not chiral. So, this is called pseudo chiral center. Some books prefer to write small r or small s for this to, to distinguish between the normal stereo center versus the this type of pseudo stereo center. They write small s, small r notation they use. Okay. So, we have uh, now, gone through the this absolute configuration, the Kahn Ingold Prelock system, and you have seen that how to assign the RS nomenclature into a compound which is written in a three dimensional formula or in a Fisher projection formula. And there are certain rules, you always remember those rules. And then uh, just one more thing is left, and that is uh, sometimes there are compounds where the fourth ligand is a lone pair. So, if like nitrogen. If the fourth ligand is a lone pair, then because the lone pair has no atomic number, it is only electrons. So, lone pair takes the least, lone pair is the least prior group followed by hydrogen and then followed by your carbon, then nitrogen, then fluorine, oxygen, then fluorine. So, it is the other way around, less. 
So, this is less preferred and oxygen is less preferred than fluorine. So, this is the priority system. So, always if there is a lone pair, so you have to take into account of the lone pair as the fourth group and that is the group of least priority because it has no atomic number. Okay. So, lone pair less than H, less than carbon, less than nitrogen, less than oxygen, less than phosphorus. Fluorine. Okay. Thank you.